Tonight on our news, an investigation leads to multiple charges, including money laundering and bribery. A massive junkyard fire in Grand Bahama today, sending smoke for miles. And she's the new top primary school student of the year. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Former Water and Sewage Corporation Chairman Adrian Gibson and six others appeared in the magistrate's court today, facing a total of 101 charges. Today's arraignment following a police investigation into the state-run utility company. Berthany McDermott, who has been following this story, joins us now in studio. Berthany? Christina, a busy day at the courts as supporters both of the Free National Movement and Progressive Liberal Party gathered outside the magistrate's court as the Long Island MP was formally arraigned. Long Island Member of Parliament Adrian Gibson appearing in court today on charges related to contracts while he served as executive chairman of the Water and Sewage Corporation. Gibson was hit with a total of 56 counts of failing to declare his interest in contracts awarded by WSC. Prosecutors allege that on August 23, 2021, Gibson made a false declaration of disclosure of interest in government contracts, knowing the same to be false. He was also charged with three counts of conspiracy to commit bribery. It's alleged that between June 23, 2020 and July 7, 2021, without lawful authority or a reasonable excuse, Gibson did conspire to solicit an advantage from Oak Bay Limited Trading as Baha Maintenance and Restoration as an inducement to or reward for or otherwise on account of giving assistance or using influence in the procurement and executing of Capital Works projects with WSC. Gibson, who is also a lawyer, was also charged with dishonestly receiving more than $1.2 million for landscaping and maintenance contracts issued to elite maintenance, knowing the same was obtained or appropriated by an offense. Gibson was then charged alongside his cousin Roche Gibson and Tanya Demerit with five counts of conspiracy to commit bribery. Gibson, Joanne Knowles, and Roche were also hit with 16 counts of money laundering. Gibson and his cousin were again charged with three counts of money laundering. The pair is accused of using funds from Baja Maintenance and Restoration and Elite Maintenance to purchase vehicles from B Forward and Hertz Car Rental. The pair were again hit with six counts of money laundering. The Long Island MP and Joanne Knowles were then hit with five counts of money laundering. The pair is accused of using funds from Baja Maintenance to purchase vehicles from B Forward, which represents the proceeds of crime. Gibson's cousin Roche was also charged alongside Tanya Demerit with five counts of conspiracy to commit bribery and five counts of fraud. It's alleged that between June 2020 and July 2021, the duo conspired to offer an advantage to a public servant as an inducement to or reward for or otherwise on account of him giving assistance or using influence in the procurement and executing of Capital Works projects. It's also alleged that the pair obtained over $1 million for Capital Works projects issued by the Corporation to Elite Maintenance. The former Corporation General Manager, Elwood Donaldson and Peaches Farkasen were then charged with five counts of conspiracy to commit fraud. Prosecutors say on June 3rd, 2020, the pair agreed to commit fraud by false pretense for Capital Works projects issued by WSC to Elite Management Limited. Donaldson, the former GM, was then charged with conspiracy to commit bribery. He's accused of seeking to solicit an advantage from Elite Management for Capital Works contracts from WSC. The group returns to court on September 14th for a voluntary bill of indictment. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. And Gibson was among six of those arraigned today that did not receive bail. Gibson's cousin, Roche, was the only one to receive bail in the amount of $50,000. And following the arraignment, Christina, Free National Movement leader Michael Pintard in a statement said, The FNM will stand with Gibson and believe that he is innocent until proven guilty. We will certainly continue to follow this as things develop. Christina. Thanks, Berthony. That's our Berthony McDermott reporting for us tonight in studio. Well, several members of the Free National Movement's Women's Association gathering outside the Magistrates' Court Complex and the House of Assembly today during that arraignment. President Vanessa Scott. We are family. We are all family and we need to stick together and render that moral support. Regardless of what the outcome may be, we have to stand by our own. And so we are here to render moral support to the happenings in the HOA as well as at the courts. There are seven elected MPs. Six are sitting in there this morning. The other MP, they are dragging through 
the court system. And so we have a team to, let, to render moral support to him at the courts this morning. In other news, nearly half of the court reporters on New Providence called in sick today, impacting several courts across New Providence. Our news understands that more than a dozen of them did not show up for work. They're reportedly concerned their jobs are in jeopardy now that the judiciary is set to launch a talk to text feature in its digital recording system. However, on Friday, Deputy Registrar Ronaldo Toot exclusively told our news court reporters will still play a vital role in helping transcribe court proceedings. We still were going to need our court um, reporting unit, our stenographers, so to basically still edit because it's only going to give a rough draft from time to time. You will be aware that they may, we may have one or two um, concerns or issues in terms of dialect, in terms of pronunciation of certain words. And so on the back end, um, that's why you know we have our consultants, uh, Jillian Lawrence Kincook, who have basically been training our staff in terms of the use, how we're going to basically implement the system and the rollout of this new feature. Well, hundreds of vehicles up in flames today after a fire broke out at the Kent Motors property on Grand Bahama early this morning. More on that massive blaze in a moment, but first, let's go over to the Weather Center where Greg Thompson has the latest conditions. Greg? Thanks, Christina, and welcome back. It's good to have you back in the studios. Outside our studios right now, it's warm. Temperatures in the mid-80s, 85 degrees, few clouds, east-southeast winds at 9 miles per hour. And look at that feels like temperature. Well up there in the 80s, 88 is your feels like temperature on the outdoor. Satellite view quiet around the islands, high pressure ridge building across the area. We also have some Saharan dust that's moving across the central and southeast Palmas, so you don't see much in terms of any shower activity down there across the northwest Palmas. A little instability, so a couple of showers popping up, but we expect that Saharan dust to be moving more towards the north over the next day or two, so we'll see quiet and warm weather across the islands. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news, more on criminal history of the latest murder victim and dramatic scenes from that junkyard fire in Grand Bahama today. Plus, we meet the top primary school student of the year. That's coming up when our news returns. A man accused of rape was shot and killed after a basketball game at AF Adderley Junior High School on Sunday. Police Commissioner Paul Roll giving this update. He was charged with rape and of uh, a, a lady and uh, and yes and, and burglary with a couple other individuals. Sunday's victim, 29-year-old Randy Williams, was also being electronically monitored. Police say it was around noon when officers were called to the school after reports of gunfire. He's not convicted and he's not served any time. He was on bail. Remember, we said the presumption of innocence. So you can't publish people's names and, unless they are convicted. Williams' killing was the fourth in four days and the third in just a 24-hour period. On Sunday afternoon, a man was shot and killed in the big yard off East Street. Meanwhile, on Saturday night, a man was gunned down in Pinewood Gardens. We have two male suspects in custody and are being questioning, questioning reference to that matter. Meanwhile, the commissioner says police are also investigating a slew of armed robberies that occurred last week, with most of those incidents taking place in the Carmichael area. Commissioner Roll says a business got hit for several cell phones and says police believe those same suspects may be responsible for another incident. More on this available now on the R News Facebook page. And hundreds of vehicles stored in a Grand Bahama junkyard up in flames today after a fire broke out at the Kent Motors property early this morning. Fire Services Assistant Superintendent Ellie Ariscar tells our news police got the call around 3 a.m. and by the time they got there, multiple vehicles were already engulfed in flames. Due to the amount of vehicles 
um, that were engulfed, uh, a decision was made to contain the fire as well as instead of extinguishing the fire. Um, at that time, we would have summoned a DA truck to help uh, maintain a perimeter around of the vehicles that were burning uh, so that we could keep all the vehicles that were burning in one section of the property yard and not jumping to the next yard and causing any further damage. The property is about half a mile away from Grand Bahamas Airport. Ariscar tells Air, says airport operations were not impacted, but he advised Queens Cove residents to keep an eye on air quality in the area. The smoke, as we can see, is moving more to the north. Um, um, you know, we still have the Queens Cove area, and we ask those persons, especially those that may have any respiratory issues, to you know, take precautions, um, close the windows, turn on the air condition. But we know mostly there's not much residents other than the Queens Cove residents and in the airport, uh, which is not affected at this time um, due to the smoke. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. When our news comes back from the break, concern about the number of school dropouts who have yet to return to the classroom. Plus, coming up in sports tonight, All-Pro Football Weekend, a tremendous success, and our Special Olympics team, well, they're back home. We'll give you details on that and more ahead in sports. And later, meet the 10-year-old primary school student of the year. Stay with us. news welcome back food security for all may soon be a reality as the bahamas is closer to developing a three million dollar cultivation center our sasha lightborn has the details in a report now live on the r news facebook page meanwhile minister of education glennis hannah martin expressing grave concern about the number of school dropouts who have yet to return to classes more than two years after the start of the covid 19 pandemic Minister Hannah Martin tells parliamentarians it's a chronic issue. Jasmine Brown reports. The education minister is spending a good portion of her contribution to the 2022-2023 budget debate addressing school dropouts. Put bluntly, she says it's a crisis that cannot be ignored. What we are now facing, however, in terms of the alarming numbers of children and young people to whom I've previously referred, numbering in the thousands, who've effectively dropped out of school during the pandemic and have not returned, has taken us well beyond what has been described as a previous chronic norm. norm. What we are seeing now in terms of the sheer volume of children missing from school is a crisis and an emergency and is a matter of grave concern to the ministry and to the government and to the nation. And we only need to open our eyes and, and listen and see what is happening around us to understand how important this is to get children back on track. Minister Hannah Martin says the goal is to have a 95% attendance rate in public schools by December 2020. In order to make that happen, she says boots are set to hit the ground to find and return thousands of students to schools across the country. Thousands of children for unclear reasons, we didn't know why, were either not accessing the system or logging on infrequently and were effectively not in attendance at school for very extended periods. The education minister is also insisting the education management system has been vital in keeping an accurate listing of those who have not been in attendance. This system, as I alluded to earlier, has played yet another critical role 
in allowing the ministry to identify those students who during the shutdowns and many instances continuing even to today have fallen off the radar, so to speak, and have not attended classes, in some cases for more than two years. The EMIS allowed us to see who those young people are. These children are across the nation and in varying grades. Hannah Martin says the Ministry of Education cannot tackle the troubling issue on its own and is calling on stakeholders to pitch in. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Thanks, Jasmine. In sports tonight, our special Olympics team makes a triumphant return home. Meanwhile, NFL players tackle a local cleanup project. Here's Marcellus Hall. All right, thanks a lot, Christina, and welcome back. Uh, welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. Over the weekend, busy one for football fans, uh, football fans in general here in the Bahamas, because we had the first ever All Pro Weekend featuring current and past NFL players, including our very own Mike Strawn. Before we get to that, though, let's take a look at our Special Olympics team as they returned home triumphant from competition. Team Bahamas, our Special Olympics team, arriving back home after competing at the USA Special Olympics. This past week, uh, the squad which competed in a number of various disciplines, including athletics, bocce, bowling, and other sports, did extremely well. In fact, coming home with a number of medals in tow, the team arriving to a hero's welcome at the Linden Pinling International Airport. The squad once again competing through the course of a number of days at that event and now looking forward to continue this great progress moving forward as the association, the Bahamas Olympic Association, very proud, uh, Special Olympics and indeed especially proud of its athletes on their performances at this major event. Looking at some of the other news coming in, uh, of course, the, the All-Pro Weekend, All-Pro Football Weekend taking place this past weekend, sponsored by Rev and other major sponsors, featuring NFL players, both past and current, including our very own Mike Strawn. Uh, one of the endeavors they took part in over the course of the weekend was a cleanup session at uh, one of our local beaches. That went extremely well as these athletes all look to give back to our community despite not necessarily being from the Bahamas other than Mike Strawn and Fenton who has a Bahamian heritage. The event went very well. It was just num one of a number of different events that took place over the course of the weekend. Much more to come from that as we continue the week. And that is your Check on Sports here on this Monday. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Marcellus, and congratulations to all of our Special Olympics athletes. Well, it seems like summer has really set in. Greg has the extended forecast, and a little later, the sixth grader with big dreams talks about the honor of being named the Primary School Student of the Year. Stay with us. Welcome back to our news. We're definitely beginning to feel the summer heat. Greg, what can we expect this week? Thanks again, Christina. Welcome back, everybody, for our second look at weather. Quiet weather cross area, ridge of high pressure, a couple of systems out there, that one being across the Atlantic, extending across us. You notice much in, not much in terms of cloud mass out there, so that dry air mass is with us. Some Saharan dust moving across our area as well, invading the uh, southeast and central Bahamas as we speak. There's an upper level low just to the east of uh, Hispaniola that's actually bringing in some drier air mass to the north as well. And there is a front that's sitting just across North Florida, not going to get in this area. So we're going to see some quiet weather with the next couple of days. National Hurricane Center now watching an area down in the Southwest Caribbean has potential for some development as it moves towards the Northwest. Uh, has about a 40% chance over the next couple of days. We could see a tropical depression form out of the system but it is going to move into the Gulf of Mexico should not really pose a problem for us. But that Saharan dust is going to keep us very dry and those temperatures will be soaring into the 90s with your feels like temperature very near the triple digits. Boating conditions for the Northwest Bahamas tonight to tomorrow. East to southeast winds 10 to 15 knots, seas running 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. Your high tide will be at 749 tonight. 
for the central and southeastern islands. Caution flags you down there. East to southeast winds, 15 to 20 knots. They will be gusting high across the southeast Bahamas. Seas running 4 to 7 feet over open waters. Here's a look now at your national forecast. In your extended forecast over the next several days, nothing happening out there. Quiet weather, ridge of high pressure dominating. Some Saharan dust will be with us, but those temperatures will approach the 90s, and those feels like temperatures during the daytime will approach the triple digits. Make sure you stay hydrated. That's a look at our weather. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Greg. Well, the Bahamas now has a new primary school student of the year. Our Jean Joseph tells us more. A 10-year-old student from St. Francis Joseph Primary School taking home the top honor of Bahamas Primary School Student of the Year 2022. Julia Adderley received the prestigious award with a GPA of 3.95 and numerous extracurricular activities and distinctions. Adderley, the daughter of Jerome Adderley and Leandra Kelly, says she is grateful for the opportunity to be chosen as the best and brightest among her peers and attributes her win to her support system. It's a huge accomplishment in my book and I'm very, I'm very excited, very thankful and probably my mom is my, my biggest fan, my biggest supporter. The sixth grader has big dreams and wants to be a beacon of hope for others. Yeah, I want to be somewhat of a role model for others and um, my first a job would probably be a lawyer or an engineer. Um, that way I could help people. The awards program has been the Bahamas' premier national awards recognition program for sixth graders since its inception in 1997, recognizing more than 2,800 primary school students and awarding $2.2 million in scholarships and prizes, with nearly a quarter of a million in prizes and scholarships awarded this year alone. Foundation President and CEO Ricardo DeVoe, proud to help so many students. It inspires young people to work hard, to know that I will, if I work, this will be my reward or this will be my incentive to get to the next level. And I believe because of the um, start that we would have given primary school students, they will be inspired to continue their good work in junior high school. And so I believe it's all about inspiration. And um, for us, we are just truly excited to be a part of that in this country. CBL Group of Companies CEO Franklin Butler sharing in the excitement as the title sponsor. We continue to, to remain committed. I think we have a 75,000 five-year commitment to this organization and we remain committed to even extending that beyond the five-year term. So just excited to, to really continue to be a part of community. You know, Rev and Kale Bahamas group of company that includes Alive, we have really been the pillar of really community over the last several years and delighted to continue to do whatever we can. Reporting for our news, I'm Gene Joseph. Well, thank you for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Stay up to date with the latest news on the R News Facebook page. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.